sunny. Thank you for the sunshine. Let me just take a sip of the the liquid talking juice. Hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you sunscreens that I have finished up. These are sunscreens I started mid to late summer and continue to use throughout the fall. Now, y'all know I test out a ton of different sunscreens. I review a lot of sunscreens. I have a lot of sunscreens at my disposal. So for me to finish one up in its entirety, it really says a lot about that sunscreen because every day I could choose anything. Uh, you know, I've got a ton. So for me to keep going back to the same product over and over again, enough times to finish it up in its entirety really says a lot. I have a dermatologist secret for you guys. Very, very uh, confidential here. So listen up. The most effective sunscreen, are you ready? Are you ready? Is the one that you use. It doesn't matter what the ingredients are. It can have the most stable filters on the market the you know most broad spectrum high spf high pa rating if it's not on your skin it's not helping you so the most effective sunscreen is the one that you like you use and you reapply consistently um okay the first one let me just put down the bucket of love there is the nivea it's by nivea sun and i've talked about this in other videos reviewing sunscreens nivea sun uv face soothing sensitive this is a chemical sunscreen in the European market, uh, and it's got wonderful filters, you guys, for broad spectrum protection. It has tinosorb, it has avabenzone, it has juvenile T150, it has juvenile A+, it has homosalate, and one other filter for UVB, I'm blanking on which one. And there's no cast to this. It absorbs into the skin very quickly, so it doesn't have that greasy, sticky residue to it. It doesn't pill, it doesn't ball. I mean, it's a very elegant formula. And my understanding is that this is actually pretty affordable for those of you guys uh, in Europe. Comment below. It's SPF 50 and it, it's SPF 50, wonderful filters like I said. Now this sunscreen does have alcohol denaturant which terrifies a lot of people. <laughs> uh, alcohol denaturant is a great ingredient for creating a quick absorbing formula that's not greasy. People with oily skin tend to prefer that and alcohol denaturant can help solubilize ingredients like sunscreen filters. However, it can be drying. Uh, and so for some people, you know, they prefer to not have it in there because they don't, you know, their skin is dry at baseline, fine. This product, however, I've never found to be drying whatsoever. I find it to be actually quite moisturizing. It also has licorice root in it, which is anti-inflammatory. It can help calm down redness and irritation. And otherwise it has a very short ingredient list. Uh, people with sensitive skin often find that chemical sunscreens burn or sting. And for me, I find that to be the case if I use a chemical sunscreen that has oxybenzone. I find that that filter, you know, is irritating and whatnot. Um, however, this product for me did not burn or sting. Now that could be a different story for you. I can't predict that. Um, but for me, it did not burn or sting. Uh, and I also have been able to comfortably tolerate this around my eyes. Really important that you're putting sunscreen around your eyes. Skin cancers on the eyes, super common. And one of the most common sets of questions that I'm getting is like, what can be done about wrinkles around the eyes? Sun protection is key. I mean, like, protect from those matrix metalloproteinase activity upregulating rays that chew up the dermis. So yeah, uh, sun protection is really important. And of course that also involves wearing sunglasses. It's not just the sunscreen, but it's, you know, it's really important that you're putting it there. I didn't find that this caused any burning or stinging around my eyes whatsoever. But again, that could be different for you. That's just me. Elta MD's UV Sport. I mean, I've been talking about this sunscreen since I think day one of my channel. I really love it. It is a water resistant uh, formula. And as far as UV protection, it's a combination sunscreen. So that means it has zinc in it, which protects against UVB and UVA. Um, and it also has some chemical filters in it that protect against UVB. Now for people out there who are super sensitive to chemical sunscreens, consider combination sunscreens because they do have chemical filters in them, but they also have zinc. And the chemical filters that they have tend to be those that are not super irritating. So, you know, don't dismiss the presence of chemical filters all together if you've had a bad experience with chemical sunscreens in the past. The other reason I like these combination sunscreens is I find that they are 
a nicer compromise as far as the cast. You know, the, the, the white cast is, is more acceptable than if you just go straight mineral. Um, you know, I find that there's less of a cast with these. And for people with medium to deep skin tones, it's it's acceptable enough sometimes that they, you know, they'll do a they'll do a combination sunscreen. Uh, so give this a try if you have at least a medium skin tone. Now, if you have a very deep skin tone, I do I do think that the, these combination sunscreens, including this one, is going to leave that lavender or ashen look to the skin. So be aware of that. But otherwise, you know, for me, it's it's very very subtle, and I, I don't really see a cast. These particular sunscreens, they are shiny, you guys, and a lot of people hate that. Um, so if you don't like, you know, if you're not, if you're not into to shining, then this is not, you're probably not gonna like this. Elta MD sunscreens are some of the best out there. They're very friendly for people who have sensitive skin, rosacea, acne. They have a short, short ingredient list, no fragrance, and the other thing that I like about these in particular is that they're water resistant, hence the sport, you know, so they're really good if you're gonna be doing sports or any kind of exercise outside where you're sweating. Um, so I actually really enjoy these. You know, here it's so humid that um, I like to wear water resistant sunscreens year round, even if I'm not, you know, doing sports or anything. I mean, sports, like like I'm out there <laughs> scoring touchdowns left and right. Yeah, uh, if I'm not like work, even if I'm not outside working out or something, I still like to wear a water resistant sunscreens just because I live in a very humid place. And the water resistant aspect of it just kind of guarantees a little bit more uh, insurance, if you will, that the sunscreen is staying on a little better between reapplications. All right, so I obviously like that. I, you know, I've talked about it since day one on my channel. I recommended it in my video on sunscreens for dry skin, and I've used up two bottles, so there you go. All right, and then another Elta MD sunscreen. I use this in the summer. It's their UV Clear. For me, this sunscreen, I pretty much only use in the summer. It's very matte. This, like the UV Sport, is a combination sunscreen. It has zinc and octinoxate. There's no issue, for me at least, with using this around the eyes. I don't have any burning or stinging. It has a very short ingredient list that also includes niacinamide. Now, niacinamide is an ingredient that is helpful for redness. It can help with moisture retention in the skin. I mean, it's just a very versatile ingredient. However, some people find that niacinamide burns and stings and causes irritation. And I have a whole video explaining the possible reasons for that, so check that out. If you are somebody who finds niacinamide burns and stings, you know, you, you'd wanna avoid this. This overall formulation is super matte. I find that people who either have oily skin or people who wear makeup really like this product because it leaves that matte finish that you know people with oily skin like because it reduces shine and people who wear a lot of makeup like because it kind of forms a nice base for putting powders and things, you know, makeup powders and whatnot on top, I guess. Yeah, this is a great one. I mean, it's, it's very popular. It's very well liked uh, across the board. Many, you know, many people like this sunscreen. As a matter of fact, Elta MD sunscreens, they're well liked in general uh, across the board. You kind of have to experiment with a few of them to find your to find your holy grail, but they are pretty well liked across the board. I also finished up the Neo Strata. What's the full name of this? Sheer Physical Protection. This is a great uh, tinted mineral sunscreen. Now the tint on this is very subtle. So if you have a deep skin tone, I'll tell you right off the bat, this is gonna leave a cast. It's a, it's a mineral sunscreen. There are no chemical filters in this. It has zinc and titanium dioxide. So because this is a mineral sunscreen, it's a super safe bet around the eyes. It's not irritating, but it, you know, it, it leaves a cast. And even though it's tinted, it's, it's very, it's still very uh, a subtle tint. And for people with deep skin tones, this, this is just, you know, it's not going to look right. You know, you're not going to be happy with it. Um, but I will say this, unfortunately, you know, I wish it were a deeper tint because the iron oxides that are part of the tinted formulation are an ingredient that offer a little bit of extra protection against those pro pigmenting wavelengths of visible light. And when I talk about that, I'm not talking about ultraviolet radiation. I'm talking about light that you see with your eyes. A part of the light that you see with your eyes is blue light. And we've learned over the past few years that blue light contributes to early onset and more persistent hyperpigmentation in people with medium to deep skin tones. And that type of light 
Uh, also is the type of light that comes in through window glass from the sun. So protecting your skin from that, the, the only way to really protect your skin from that is physical, physical protection with like glove, uh, gloves, well yeah, gloves on your hands, face shields, hats, um, and sunscreens that either have uh, large particles ink or iron oxides, AKA tinted sunscreens. So, uh, you know, I say unfortunate because people with medium to deep skin tones would really, you know, really benefit from tinted sunscreens. However, the tint on this is so subtle that they still have to deal with that cast, cast aspect. Beyond that, those sunscreen and blue light aspects of this, um, I believe it also has green tea extract in it, which is uh, helpful for reducing oiliness. It's an antioxidant. And I find that this really looks nice on the skin. It's very cosmetically elegant. It's SPF 50 and they've taken, they've taken the extra step here and done a PA rating, which is not part of you know, what's required in the US. PA rating tells you how good the sunscreen is at protecting you from those UVA rays. So those are the ones that don't necessarily burn too much, but they penetrate very deeply and destroy your collagen, suppress your immune system. And you know, they're part of what contributes to skin cancer risk. So PA rating of four is quite good. All right, you guys know that this is a favorite. It makes an appearance in pretty much every video. It's the Dermatology Tinted Moisturizer Universal Tint. This is SPF 46. This is probably one of my favorite daily moisturizers. It's actually what I have on my skin right now. Um, it's unlike, this one is a combination sunscreen. So it's one of those, it's a pretty safe bet around the eyes pretty safe bet for people with sensitive skin. It does have a chemical filter in it to protect against UVB, but it also has zinc. Um, it's tinted, so you're gonna get that little bit of extra insurance against the pro-pigmenting wavelengths of visible light. Um, unlike the Neostrata one that I just showed you, the tint on this is a little deeper, and overall I think goes over much better with people with deeper skin tones. I, I hear that from people all the time. Uh, you know that they like this and they're really enjoying it. So I, I would say this one is also very well liked, very popular. I like it, I wear it every day. It also has niacinamide in it. That's that ingredient that helps reduce redness, irritation, can help fight off some of that um, free radical damage potentially, helps with skin barrier repair, and helps, uh, de helps in improving uh, hyperpigmentation. Great ingredient, but like I said, some people find that it burns, stings, causes irritation. This brand, by the way, Dermatology, is cruelty free. All right, this one is new to me and I actually really liked it. I ended up using it, to be honest, more so on the body, like sun exposed areas on the body, like my arms or my lower legs. And it's this company, Summer Ready. Now this is a chemical sunscreen. There is no cast to this whatsoever. Um, it has uh, no oxybenzone in it. So chemical sunscreens, to backtrack, are those that tend to not leave, a, typically don't leave a cast. And they, however, they can cause stinging and irritation for people with sensitive skin. And for me, the chemical sunscreen ingredient that does that is oxybenzone. This has no oxybenzone and does not burn or sting for me whatsoever. Able to wear it around the eyes with no issue. I like that it's water resistant up to 80 minutes. It's, uh, this particular product is also vegan. It has panthenol in it, which is good for um, adding for moisture retention. Um, but they talk about vitamin D promoting SPF technology. I honestly don't know what they're talking about there. I think they're just kind of trying to, trying to maybe allay consumers' fears that sunscreens are going to contribute to vitamin D deficiency, which they don't. Uh, you guys, I get that question all the time, like, how do I get vitamin D when I wear sunscreen? Well, I get it from food, you know, and uh, like there's no evidence that wearing sunscreen causes vitamin D deficiency. And there are studies showing that even when people use sunscreen in the amounts that they're supposed to, which almost no one does, two milligrams per centimeter square surface area, that it does not affect their vitamin D levels. So sunscreen does not cause vitamin D deficiency. As a matter of fact, some experts argue that wearing sunscreen might actually make you slightly more efficient at, uh, at making vitamin D in your skin with sun exposure because uh, part of UV from the sun is UVA. And UVA actually uh, messes up that enzyme in the skin that is part of the vitamin D synthesis machinery. Because sunscreens block out that UVA, uh, and it's the UVB that, that, you know, that machinery needs, 
because sunscreens block out UVA, it might actually allow more of the specific wavelength of UVB to do its thing in the skin and make vitamin D. That's a theory, so I'll, you know, don't get too excited about that. But suffice it to say, wearing sunscreen is not going to cause vitamin D deficiency. I mean, it simply does not. There's no evidence for that. There's no evidence that people who wear sunscreen are vitamin D deficient, and there's no evidence that you know people who are vitamin D sufficient and start wearing it suddenly become vitamin D deficient. Um, so yeah, anybody who tells you otherwise is just fear mongering sunscreen, which is a popular, a popular activity to do. Um, but no, sunscreen uh, reduces the visible signs of aging and can prevent skin cancer formation and does not cause vitamin D deficiency. That's another, shouldn't be a Durham secret, but you know. All right, and then last but not least, you gotta wear sunscreen on your lips too. Don't forget your lips. And I, you know, you can wear your sunscreen, your regular face sunscreen or whatever on your lips. A lot of them are super drying though, honestly. And you all know who have been watching me for a while that I prefer to wear an SPF lip balm. And this is my favorite. It's the Vanny Cream Lip SPF. It's fragrance free. It's super moisturizing. It has petrolatum in it, which reduces trans epidermal water loss. It has very few ingredients. It's not irritating. It's not drying. It does put a quite a, it does put a cast onto the lips, which I find fades down and just kind of makes it look like my lips are a lighter shade. There's nothing left in here. Um, so I can't show you, but it's not drying. It's very moisturizing. If you have a deeper skin tone, it'll be that little cast will be more noticeable on you. A viewer recently sent me a lip balm from, um, Sun Balm that is also very minimal ingredient list, no fragrance. It's a mineral sunscreen. It's super moisturizing. The cast that that one offers is much, that, the cast on that is much more acceptable, I think, than this. So I'll link that down below. I've reviewed it in my, in my recent lip balm video, so check that out if you wanna see it in action. But um, you know, for me, this is a holy grail for sure, and I you know, typically use, use one up in its entirety every couple of months. All right, guys, those are the empties from these past few months. I hope y'all enjoyed this video, and if you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.